California's Pacific Coast Highway ranks among America's most breathtaking routes. Stretching over 650 miles, this highway has always been an engineering marvel as it runs along perilous cliffs. From its inception, constructing this road was a highly complex endeavor, with some people doubting if it could ever be accomplished. As expected, the construction of the roadway was extremely expensive, costing billions of dollars. But for decades since its opening, this highway has struggled to make it through a single year without any road closures due to landslides. When such incidents occur, unfortunately, large sections of the highway are lost, and each year, the state spends millions of dollars to patch up the road in a bid to save the highway. Today let's delve into the story of the iconic American highway that is now falling into the sea. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. California State Route 1, also known as Highway 1 or the Pacific Coast Highway, was built to improve transportation and access along the California coastline. Beyond its practical purposes, one significant reason for constructing Highway 1 was to create a scenic route that highlights the natural beauty of the California coast. Highway 1 was deemed California's first official scenic highway when it opened in 1937. It has since become a major tourist attraction and a symbol of California's beauty. The road stretches across more than 656 miles through the state, but is most known for the sections along California's central coast, where millions of tourists each year admire the pristine and wild terrain where the mountains meet the Pacific. California's coastline is renowned for its geological diversity, featuring steep cliffs, rocky terrain, and landslide-prone areas. In its most famous stretch between San Francisco and Los Angeles, the highway is carved into steep, mountainous terrain around the rugged Big Sur coast. This region is a geological nightmare, as a mix of hard and soft rock makes development a challenge at best. It's also located at the edge of two tectonic plates. The Big Sur coastline is the country's steepest coastline outside of Alaska, so numerous bridges and tunnels had to be built under highly unstable geological conditions to preserve the highway's scenic beauty and navigate the challenging coastal features. Having attempted to build along the coastline as early as 1911, the state was well aware of the challenges. Accounts suggest that the effort to build the highway began with the need for a direct coastal route between Ventura and Santa Barbara. But just as the concept of a coastal road was gaining traction, local funding ran out, prompting the newly formed State Highway Commission to take over and complete the road in 1913. One of the most challenging sections of the Pacific Coast Highway was along the Big Sur Coast. In 1919, the state approved the construction of what was then known as Route 56, or the Carmel San Simeon Highway, to connect Big Sur to the rest of California. Federal funds were approved in 1921, with voters subsequently approving additional state funds to make that stretch of the highway possible. Labor costs were managed by utilizing unskilled convict labor from three temporary prison camps set up by San Quentin State Prison. Inmates were paid 35 cents per day and had their prison sentences reduced, providing them with an incentive to work diligently. The route required the construction of 33 bridges, the largest being the Bixby Bridge. Additionally, six more concrete arch bridges were built between Point Sur and Carmel. The state persevered through an arduous 18 years of construction, often plagued by funding issues that nearly halted the project during the Great Depression. However, New Deal funds ultimately saved the project, and America's most beautiful highway opened on June 17, 1937. The road was initially called the Carmel San Simeon Highway and designated as Route 56, but it became better known as the Roosevelt Highway in honor of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the architect of the New Deal. Extensions continued over the years, and by the 1940s, California State Route 1 was completed. It didn't take long for landslides to become a significant issue for the newly opened highway. Although it is difficult to pinpoint the exact date when landslides first began affecting the Pacific Coast Highway, they have been a recurring problem since the early days of construction, 
necessitating regular monitoring and mitigation efforts. One notable incident occurred along the Pacifica and Daly City coast in what is now known as Thornton Beach, which became unstable after a 5.3 magnitude earthquake in March 1957. Another significant event was the Big Rock Mesa landslide in September 1983 in Malibu, one of the worst in the state's history. The disaster resulted in 250 homes collapsing, cracking, or sliding off their foundations. The state agreed to pay $40 million in damages as the construction of the Pacific Coast Highway, which involved cutting through the hillside, was a contributing factor to this disaster. Much of Highway 1 was built downhill from the location of previous rock slides, and once a slide has happened, it's more likely to recur. These landslides bring a steady drumbeat of road blockages, tourism disruptions, and stranded communities. Now, some fear the landslides are getting worse due to climate change and engineering missteps throughout the roadway's lifespan. The Devil's Slide area of the highway has been notorious for major landslides. In 1995, one landslide caused the road to close for five months, while another in 2006 led to a four-month closure. To address these challenges, the Tom Lantis tunnels were opened in 2013 to bypass the area. In 2011, significant construction was completed between Muir Beach and Stinson Beach, which included the addition of a 523-foot-long, 20-foot-high retaining wall. This followed a four-month, $25 million reconstruction effort to repair damages from a 2007 landslide. Despite these efforts, issues persisted and even increased. A landslide in the Big Sur region in March 2011 closed the highway for several months. To mitigate the risk, a section prone to frequent landslides was replaced with a bridge and covered with a rock shed. Another major slide at Mud Creek closed a 30-meter stretch of the highway in May 2007. The massive Mud Creek slide covered about a third of a mile of road with 40 feet of dirt and rocks. Multiple landslides during successive storm systems in January 2023 forced the closure of nearly 40 miles of the highway. Given the recurrent nature of these disasters, there have been instances where the state had to abandon sections of the road altogether. For instance, the Katoni Coast Dairies in Santa Cruz County experienced a significant landslide in 2017, causing a portion of the highway to collapse into the sea. The road was abandoned in that area, and efforts were made to reroute traffic. Another section of the highway running through Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park in Big Sur also collapsed into the sea, becoming one of the most famous examples of this type of erosion. Consequently, the highway was temporarily closed and abandoned, with traffic rerouted to address the unstable terrain. The latest slip-out, known as the Rocky Creek Slide, exemplifies the complexity of the problem. It stranded 1,500 people at the end of March this year, as workers were making slow progress addressing three other slides. California's transportation agency Caltrans estimates it will take more than $100 million to fix them all if new slides don't come first. California is a national leader in confronting climate change, but making Highway 1 sustainable may be a challenge it cannot surmount. Despite spending a billion dollars a year to fix damage that climate-related stressors inflict on its roadways, plus $100 million in projects to make infrastructure more resilient to climate change, the state is struggling to fortify one of its most prized landmarks. California's plan for adapting the highway to climate change is to keep rebuilding it. State planners recognize there aren't many options other than to keep patching up the road, even as climate change accelerates coastal erosion through sea level rise, bigger storms and wildfires that strip the landscape and make it more vulnerable to slides. On one side of the road, vertical bluffs dropping into the ocean make it difficult to build stable bridges and causeways. On the other, mountains make it hard to relocate the highway inland. What usually ends up happening is the cliff is built back up with giant boulders. It's cheap, but isn't very long-lasting. There are bumps of new asphalt alongside snaking cracks, signs of repair and disrepair, 
as the process is repeated again and again, and all of this costs money. Last year, the California Transportation Commission approved setting aside a billion dollars, specifically for climate adaptation projects. Even as California is rebuilding a section of the iconic Pacific Coast Highway, experts warn that climate change is upping the chances it will simply collapse into the ocean again. Caught between rising tides and crumbling cliff sides, maintaining the highway has become somewhat of a Sisyphean task as it takes up millions of dollars each year. What are your thoughts on the fate of this highway? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.